Hey y'all, welcome back to the Intentional Mind Podcast. I'm your host, Angie Barnard, and today we're talking about your intuition or your inner voice, whatever you want to call it. That part of you that guides you, that is wise. I know that if you're like me, you want to live a life that is more intuitively led. Like you understand that there is something inside of you that really knows what to do, but sometimes it can be difficult to tap into that side of you or to recognize like, is that talking to you or is it the mind? Is it fear? Is it ego? All that stuff. And the reason why I know that people struggle with this is because when I've been coaching people so often, people have said to me, Ange, what do you think I should do? Like something's going on in their life and they're like, what do you think I should do? And I'm like, what is your intuition telling you? And they'll be like, I don't know. Like, I don't know if it's my intuition talking or if it's a fear thing or is it like ego thing? I mean, I don't really know. And that's what made me realize that we all, I think, need help with this in this area. If we haven't done much work in like strengthening this relationship, then it may be difficult to be able to tell who or like what is the thing speaking to you. Because I really do believe that intuition, that inner voice, Holy Spirit, whatever you want to call it, I really do think that was given to us from God to help guide us. And it's always there for us to tap into. But sometimes we just aren't quiet enough or we, you know, we just can't recognize it. And the way that you improve a relationship is what? You give it time. You spend more time with that. You start to notice that you pay attention to it, right? You love on it. This is like how you would improve any kind of relationship. Okay, so I have Helena on the show and Helena knows a lot about your inner voice and she actually teaches classes around strengthening your relationship with your inner voice. So I thought no better person to come on and talk to us about your inner voice, intuition, like whatever it is you want to call this thing. You know it's inside of you and you know it's wise and it can guide you and lead you to so many cool places. The thing that I've noticed is when I actually am tapping into listening to that and it, I have so much fun in life. It's like flow, that feeling. I know a lot of us want more flow in our life, but we'll just get right to it. Here we go. So I first found out about Helena when I actually got an email about a training that she was doing and it was really random because yeah, just the re- the email popped up randomly and it said like strong mind, strong inner voice. Is that what you call it? A strong voice? Yeah. Oh, no, strong inner voice. Yeah. Strong inner voice. Okay. Strong mind, strong inner voice. And I was like, Ooh, that sounds interesting. And I remember I had a work meeting that day and I just felt this tug. It was at that, the work meeting was at that time. And I mm-hmm. felt this tug, like I needed to be at this training, even though I really didn't know much about, about it, what it was really about. And, um, so I showed up and I went and then, then I saw Helena and she started talking about the intuition and the mind, the difference between the two. And she gave tips for dealing with the mind and all this good stuff. And I I'm telling you, I'm not exaggerating when I say this, that since then it's completely changed how I view my life. And I really feel like I've been able to make progress on things like in a way that feels really good for me. Like, you know, the Mm -hmm. whole joyful productivity concept, like being productive, but you're also doing it in a very joyful way. I feel like that's happened a lot since I heard what you had to say. And I think this is because of how you describe the relationship between the mind and the intuition. And before we hit record, we were actually just geeking out about these metaphors that we had around like how you can create a container for that flow that you have. We'll talk more about that because I know it's going to show up. But yeah. anyhow, I want everyone to know a little about you in general, you know, where you're from, what do you like to do in your free time, what kind of work you're up to, all the things. And then I imagine we'll just flow into more things about the intuition and the mind. So tell us, Helena, a little bit about you. Yeah. Um, first of all, I love to hear that story of, of how you flowed into it, because I think that's, that's just a testament to your own strong mind, strong inner voice, <laughs> like just listening to that tug and, and going there. But, um, yeah, so I'm Helena. I, uh, I'm a Swede. I live in Stockholm, Sweden, and, uh, I call myself an intuitive coach and I do, I write books, I do online courses and workshops and events, things like that. 
And I also work as an HR consultant. So I go into companies helping them um, and coaching leaders as well to live more or lead more heart-centered, um, less from the mind, I would say is a common theme and more from the intuition or from the heart or however you want to call it. So that's a little bit about what I do. I would say I live my life more and more intuitively. I call it an intuitive life in flow where I have less and less plans and goals and objectives and more and more just listening to what wants to happen rather than what my mind thinks it needs to live a good life. Because I think a lot of the things that is coming from my mind are the norms or what is expected of me or what I've heard from other people or just like copying what everyone is doing. And I'm so into now um, helping myself and others to actually listening in, listening in to your own inner voice and and your own, like being the puzzle piece that you are here to be, which is not a copy of anyone else. And it doesn't mean we have to live like extraordinary, crazy lives, but just actually listening into what's my authentic truth and what wants to happen rather than how am I supposed to do this? Or what am I expecting life to look like according to a map that someone else drew? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I have so many questions that are popping up and I'm like, which one, which one do I want to ask? So the other yeah. thing I'm curious about is your, like your journey, as far as how you got so interested in this work or started doing it. Like, I'm assuming you had your own journey of stuff that yeah. led you here. Like we all do. So can you tell us yeah. a little bit about that? Yeah. So I, I would say, um, the first if we just take it from the lens of, of the intuition, uh, I think I've always had a, a strong relationship to my intuition, although that was not what, what I called it growing up. But the first like real uh, strong intuitively led decision I made was 10 years ago when I was really sick. I had six different autoimmune d- diseases and I was being investigated for more and I have all these weird symptoms. And in the Swedish healthcare system, they were like, I was starting to ask why, um, why am I getting worse and worse? And and what's the root cause of this? Can we look at that? But it was just about symptom suppression and keeping me alive, basically. Uh, and that's, that's the first, like, very strong sense I had of like, there is something coming from within me here, like there is an inner voice telling me a different story. And the story in that case was just like, no, this is not this, your diagnosis is not your prognosis. And this is not it for you. Like, this is not the only way to do this. And so I started like leaning into the the clues that I got and following those steps, which led me to functional medicine, which led me to a lot of lifestyle changes, which led me to realizing that it wasn't only about the food and the, uh, and, and the lifestyle was also about uh, like the stress and I needed to become a better friend with to myself because when I was getting better I was still very self-criticizing and then like opening up to emotional journeys and and dealing with my emotions in healthier ways and also dealing with my thoughts finding ways to become more like uh, it's interesting in the, in this context to say like mentally fit or like have the mental tools to deal yeah. with it, which is what we want to talk more about. But um, so that was like my intuition led me into that kind of journey that started with the physical body, but became so much more like peeling off the layers of an onion, just going deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper. Um, and in in that, of course, I got more interested in the intuition because I felt that that was the one one thing in me or energy in me that was guiding me, that was helping me much better than my mind ever could or other people ever could. So then I, I leaned more into that kind of work through Just Lively, which is in the living room where we uh, first met, um, and, and her work on inner voicing uh, and intuition work. And then I've just been 
deepening that in so many different ways. I, I trained as an inner voice facilitator for her in 2020, but I've also been toying with it a lot on my own and finding ways of deepening my relationship to my intuition, but also finding more alignment and flow and, and yeah, dealing with the mind in different ways. So now I would say that I do live a, an intuitive life in flow um, where my intuition is the main guide and my mind is, is here to serve, uh, is here to support that journey. Ooh. Yeah. Okay. So the, you, like, I'm curious about a story maybe recently since you've, you've gotten so much better at like letting your intuition lead. Yeah. Um, and then like, what is that quote that you shared? It's by Robin Sharma. Um, about the mind the- is a terrible master, but an excellent servant. Yes. So letting your intuition in a sense, be the master and the mind, be the servant. Tell mm-hmm. me about something. I'm curious, like a story recently where you, you did that and like what resulted like from doing that, letting your intuition lead and your mind be a servant. Yeah. One thing that comes to mind is just like, uh, I was doing a meditation and in that meditation, it just came to me like just a, a, a nudge or a hunch to take a weird path to where I used to go and buy lunch. Uh, and I was like, why should I go there? It's like, further but yeah and um but I I I tried it because like it was um it felt it felt very strongly that I needed to do it and on that bridge I bumped into someone uh that I started talking to and that later um opened up so many doors for me and and we have had such great collaborations and friendship after that and I'm not sure like I didn't know that I was going to meet him there um of course and I didn't know him very well but we had said hi before but just that conversation that happened on that bridge because I was asked to take that path is just a very simple example of of the the rat like yeah I I don't think anything is random but I think I am being Mm -hmm. guided in those kinds of ways and that's how I'm I think when we think about intuition, we think that these big things like my healing journey, like you're yeah. not supposed to die young, like show, look at this <laughs> and, and and everything will change. But I'm, I'm actually using my intuition more and more now in the, in the day to day, those kinds of small stuff. And, and, and another thing that comes to mind was just this training that I, um, my mind really didn't want to go to this spring. Um, and then like, there was an email in my inbox and my intuition was just like poking me about it. Like Mm -hmm. go look it up. And then like, I had a Zoom meeting with someone and in that Zoom meeting, it was like, okay, I need to lean into this energy. I'm supposed to be at this training. I don't need this training. Why should I go to this training? Says the mind. (laughs) But the intuition is like, you just go, I'll take care of the rest. And then when I had decided to go to the training, my mind, of course, filled in a lot of the gaps of like, okay, so now I'm going to change my whole business. And this is going to mean this and this and this and this and this. And then I went to the training and it was just a beautiful week with so much pleasure and so much community. And I got to witness some people doing some excellent facilitation. I got some beautiful coaching myself. I am not working with that modality today. That's not where I'm supposed to be there. My intuition just wanted to give me a beautiful gift. And I don't know where that will, that that network now will take me going forward. But I think that was also just one of a, oh, those uh, things where my mind is like, well, no, that, that that's weird. I don't understand why. And then you take the intuitive decision and then the mind still wants to be there and like, oh, now this means this. Yes. But, uh, but I, I don't know what it means. I just need to follow and see what happens. Yeah. I love those stories because I want people to see that it's in your every day where you get this, like this tug towards something. And then, yeah, yeah, maybe you'll go do that thing. Like you did where you met with that person and it led to like great, you know, um, a great relationship and it was fun for you and all of those things. But then the mind will jump in and be like, this means this, you need to do this next. Like, and then you see that part happening yeah. where it's yeah. like, um, what if it's just like met, like, what if it was just because that was enjoyment for you, like right. straight up, you know, like what yes. if it's, and I think that the thing is, is when we follow the intuition more, life mm-hmm. really does feel like a lot more fun and enjoyable. Yeah. 
because yeah. a lot of ways, a lot of times we try to suck the joy, the mind will jump in and be like, I'm going to control this thing. We're going to make it mean this. We're going to do like whatever. And it like takes, it's like a fun sucker, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Like that. Definitely. Actually, let's back up for those. We just, we started talking about the mind already and the intuition. And I know anyone who's listening, you kind of know what we mean by both those things, but Helena, mm. can you tell them like your definition of, I guess the intuition, the mind and the difference between the two? Mm hmm. Um, yeah, I would say the mind is like a sorting, sifting, analyzing, organizing tool um, that is amazing at its job. And it's very hardworking and it wants your best. Um, it's also not very evolved in like differentiating between fantasy and reality. And so it's often very, very fear-filled. And it's like looking for problems. You have the negativity bias and all those kinds of things. So that's that's the mind. It's a beautiful tool. I love my mind. It's very strong and it's very quick. And it's very like, it has all these beautiful qualities, but it's also very controlling. Mm -hmm. And then there is the intuition, which I feel like lives more in my body. I know some people talk about the third eye, but I, I connect to my intuition uh, like somewhere in my gut or in my heart. Um, and that is more of a knowing. It's always like calm, compassionate, loving, grounded. It's never complicated. Mm -hmm. uh, and when regards to how it's, it's communicating, it's usually like through a, just a nudge how do you explain that I don't know like it's it's a knowing it's a sometimes it's through a feeling sometimes a yes from the intuition might be like like an expansion like an opening like a longing like creativity like inspiration like flow leaning in kind of feeling and the no might be like contraction and like going yeah. backwards and, and feeling smaller or or feel fear filled or or things like that um but also the intuition, sometimes it can communicate through words or images or colors. Um, that all That's very individual in my experience because I connect with a lot of people's intuition. Uh, but I would say the main thing is your intuition is your guide in your life. And the mind is the tool to get there, sort of. Oh, that's really good. Intuition is the guide and the mind is the tool to get there. So yeah. a lot of times like we were talking about how a lot of us can really like hate on our mind, you know, sometimes, yeah. or like, sometimes we label like ego, you know, or we're like, we hate on that part, but yeah. you have a different way of looking at it as like, they work well together. Yeah. Yeah. We yeah. need our minds. Yeah. And we were yeah. talking about this. Is what brings us to our metaphor that we were talking about earlier was about how creating a container for your flow. It's almost like if you think of intuition, like that, even flow, we can just call it that. And then we have the container for the flow. Like we were talking about how in, I'm drinking a cup of coffee right now and I have this container for my coffee to be in. So then yeah. otherwise, if I didn't have the container, then the coffee would be all over the place. And yeah. then sometimes in our life, we try to like act like we can just show up and be like, I'm just going to go with the flow. But then we don't get the things done that we want because we're not giving that flow a container. And this reminds yeah. me of the mantra that I always say. And if you listen to the show, you hear me say this is I'm intentional, but I'm unattached. Yeah. And what this you can also think about this as I'm intentional, like mind, mindy language. I'm intentional, unattached, intuition like yeah. language. We were, so Helena and I were talking about writing and I know some of you listening want to write a book or something like that someday. Right. So yeah. I was asking her about, um, how she was like able to do this. And yeah. Helena, you described about the container in a sense, you picked a time yeah. frame that you were going to work. That was yeah. your container. And yeah. then you showed up and then the flow came there. Yeah, I'm noticing my intuition is showing me uh, an add-on to this metaphor now. There's like this tap. The intuition is is the one turning on the tap. Ooh. So so first, like I don't feel like it was not my mind that decided about this book. Like the book wanted to come through, 
And then the intuition turned on the tap of this, this book wanting to come through me. And then I wanted it to be more like intuitive. So I, I said to people and to myself, like, I'm just going to flow with it. I'm just going to write when it feels intuitively right. And then months pass and I'm just procrastinating. But then when I decided like, this is actually wanting to come through me and I am the mm-hmm. vessel in which it wants to come through. Like, I think that's an important adding because otherwise it can, can be just mind, 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 mind doing all these things, playing all the roles. But I think the intuition is the one turning on the tap. And then I created a container. And, and in my case, this was just like one hour every morning. Like this is my sacred space where I am writing and I am opening or I, I'm, I'm being the vessel of this thing that wants to come through me. And then I just sat for one hour every morning, not more, not less. And sometimes it flowed really beautifully. Sometimes it was kind of kind of stuck. Didn't matter. I was just there. And then after mm-hmm. a few months, the book was out. And I think I, going back to that um, metaphor, then I think the intuition is turning on the tap. But if you don't create a container for that, the water is just going to splash all over, just as you said with a coffee. But if I choose to give it some kind of I, I see it as like um a pipe or something for the yeah. water to, to flow, flow through then you have a stream and not just water all over the place so I think that's how so that the intuition is the one turning on the tap the mind is the one creating the the pipe and the intuition is also the one flowing through the pipe oh that's so good I love yeah. it. So if you're thinking about anything that we want to create in our life, like even just using that metaphor is like figuring mm-hmm. out, you know, like the flow the, it's already there. If you're feeling like that's yeah. something that you want to do, I feel like you're being led somewhere. Yeah. And now yeah. it's like figuring out what can you do to help support that intuition? Yeah. To like right. flow. Yeah. I love it. Okay. So, um, Tell us about your tips because I love this so much around dealing with the mind because sometimes the mind wants to do all the things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so tell us um, about how do you deal with that so the intuition is showing up mm-hmm. and can be the master and the mind yeah. can be the servant. What yeah. are some of your tips? I think the 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 one thing that we talked about in also in self leadership is just uh being able to observe the mind I think that's one of the first steps because you need to realize I am not my thoughts I have thoughts they come and go not all of them are true just because I think them so just like creating that and for me like meditation is a great tool for that or or just in general just looking at like an anthropologist just looking at the mind and the chatter in there with more of a like huh that's interesting or Oh, that was a strong reaction to to that comment or just learning to observe it rather than being trapped in it. And mm-hmm. just like in the in the the tornado of of the mind. Uh, I think Eckhart Tolle talks about it like being um, like a um, what do you call it? Not an air conditioner, but the one with with the uh, turning thing. Like a fan. Yeah, the fan. Yeah. <laughs> so you're like, either. So, so the, the, the his metaphor is this: like, either you could be, your mind is the fan. You could be in the fan, just going around with the fan, which is very crazy, and how most of us live our lives. And then you could like step out of the fan and look at the fan, um, and and just realize like the fan is going. There's a lot of things happening in there, but I am not the fan. And then when when he says like, the more you practice detaching from the mind and looking at it as a tool and and also for his from his perspective like the the more enlightened you get the further away from the fan you can move and like the fan is still going in the side of the room like the mind will always keep going and that's okay it's just a fan I am here I am like eating my food or walking in nature or listening to music or doing something and there's a fan in the room like I don't have to be in the fan I can look at the fan but the fan will never go away. And I don't have to hate on the fan. Just yeah. Those metaphors. But just, I think for me, the observing part is just like realizing I am not the fan. And I don't have to be constantly in this nauseating 
roller coaster. I can step out and look at it and just like, oof, it's messy in there today. Um, but I'm here, like I'm breathing. I have two feet on the ground. I'm okay. Mm-hmm. And it's like leaning into it too. Like the, you're the observer so yeah. that you can be curious about it too. Yeah. I kind of right. think about it in our life. Like if like, let's say I have a really strong reaction to something, it can be like, Ooh, that was a strong yeah. reaction. Yeah. And wonder what that was about. What, what's right. really coming up there. And it's like, then you're, yeah, you're leaning into curiosity versus then getting trapped up in it, the tornado of it all too. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. And this isn't always easy. I'm just saying no. it because it's very, <laughs> very possible. And I, I would say for myself, I have really, really uh, developed this over the years. Meditation has been a great tool, but also other things. Yeah, I have lots of tools, but I think it's worth uh, practicing. And I think the first step is probably to just not believe in all the thoughts. Mm-hmm. Just realize this is a thought and like look at it like, oh, interesting. I have a thought in my hand. It's just, it's saying I'm unworthy of love. Like, oh, that's a nasty thought. Or like, yeah. You know, live my life according to this thought like getting into like Byron Katie's the work which is another another great tool of like is this true like just because I'm thinking it is it true can I really know that it's true what happens to me when I believe in this thought and what Mm -hmm. what would be possible for me without this thought and that's yeah I just quickly said the four questions of, of Byron Katie's the work which is all over the internet if people want to go deeper into that but it's just a, for me it's a very simple tool of just realizing like I am not my thoughts and I don't have to believe in all of them and there's and also realizing like if I choose to believe in this thought like I am unworthy of love or this person hates me or uh the world is ending or uh everyone is is dangerous like those mm-hmm. kinds of thoughts, if we choose to believe them and live our lives accordingly, that's that's not a very nice life. Yeah. So just just distancing us, ourselves from it and also like what happens to me if I believe in this thought and what would be possible for me without this thought and just choosing a different thought, not affirming like toxic positivity of like, I'm the best person in the world and everyone loves me. Like, no, that's probably not like, you're not going to believe that it doesn't, it doesn't feel uh, true to you, but you could say, I am worthy of love. Mm -hmm. Like you could start there or I have support around me or I have the resources to deepen my self love or whatever ways you or steps you take to get closer to a more loving thought. Yeah. So it's like observing the thoughts noticing how it makes you feel when you believe that thought and then it's like you're reaching for a better thought if that doesn't feel good to you yeah right versus just running with the initial thought the initial thing that the mind wants to run with yes and but another way I do sometimes when it's really messy up there I do the emptying and that's uh that's just basically let giving the mind an outlet because it's it's bugging you so much when it's busy in there because it thinks that it has a lot of things that you need to know. Mm-hmm. So just actually opening that tab and just like emptying out, like getting all the things out onto paper. And then when you have emptied done the brain dump, you could just look at like, oh, this is nonsense. Oh, this is something I actually need to do. Or, uh, oh, that, that's, that's a fearful thought. Maybe I want to change that. Or like just looking at it, that's also helping with the observing, uh, but just getting it out of there because the mind is not very good at storing a lot of information like that, especially not top of mind. And I'm not a neurosurgeon scientist. I don't know exactly how it works. I just know my mind, my own mind and my client's mind, how they actually function. And And for me, that's just a great tool to just get it out of there so I can look at it more objectively yeah so it's emptying yeah so I love that your strategies kind of work in ways like that how the mind works like when you talked about being the sorter and things like that you're you're using those same strategies for how the mind is 
because yeah. that works best for the mind. So like yeah, the whole emptying that. thing, I love that. Cause that's helped me so much when I feel like I feel overwhelmed. Like mm-hmm. I always talk about, um, doing what I call a thought download where I just get all my thoughts out. And even if they make mm-hmm. no sense, even if yeah. they, most of the time they're like really random, it's like, Oh, I'm mad at this person. You have to go get cat litter and yeah. <laughs> make this thing for yeah. dinner. Like all this right. random things. Yeah. yeah. And then you can observe. And like you said, you could be like, oh, this is something I actually need to do. Um, that yeah. thought is not serving me. Like, you know, yeah. that kind of stuff. And then you work through it. I yeah. love it. So observe the mind emptying. And then what's another strategy for dealing with the mind? Embodying is the my favorite tool nowadays actually realizing that I'm so I'm so much more than my mind but I also have a body and it's really nice to live the life through the body not identifying I am not my body either I am the one observing or having those as tools but to just get me into the present moment like noticing like that's mindfulness basics like through the breath just taking a deep breath when I notice my mind is really triggered about something or Mm -hmm. dancing. I do a lot of dancing in my work days, just like take a pause and put on a song and just like notice how my body wants to move in that moment or just connecting with nature. I, I touch a lot of trees or the ground or walk barefoot or soak myself in water. I love like cold plunges and things like that but just whatever whatever triggers my senses in a way that gets my attention out of the mind and into the body um it's just such a pleasurable way for me to to just live my life also through I'm noticing so so often now that my mind is is not even like that triggered because I'm so um I'm so involved in the sensing of my life and sensing how it feels to be living this avatar today in this context, sitting here on the chair, seeing you on the screen, like hearing my own voice. Like that's what's going on. I don't have to think about what's what's going to happen next or what happened just before. Yeah. Do you feel like I love how you talked about embody embodying and like being in the body? Um, because I feel like I've heard the term like embodiment and things like that before, but I never really understood. And I've even heard people say like they're embodiment coaches and things, but when Mm. you just bring up the concept of like, yeah, move with your like dancing or doing something to like be in your body and not so much in the head. Mm -hmm. Like I really resonated with just those images of dancing around with my body or walking in nature, touching the ground, touching a tree, whatever. Yeah. Um, and then that got me thinking about how important I bet that is for actually hearing the intuition. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. So then yeah. I was thinking about your work, like helping people hear their own inner voice since you've been doing so much of this. Because we are, I feel like so heady, that's just what's coming up for me, the word, like we are working with our minds so much. Mm-hmm. Um how do you get people like, what are some of the things that you're doing that are helping them actually hear their inner voice? Mm. Yeah. So I, I do a lot of like inner voice sessions, which is mm-hmm. an actual, like, or how I do them nowadays is I, I would call them to the mind to not be freaked out. I would just say it's a 90 minute deep meditation. Uh, but that session, the mind isn't even invited. Like, so I, I do a lot of things like it's a guided thing to, to get the mind to, to relax and it's like recorded and like there's lots of things and this is also what I um, was taught by Just Lively to do those kinds of sessions where we go deep down into the body and we breathe away the thoughts and we listen and we and I facilitate that communication however it wants to show up with intuition but I would also say so that's like a that's a container for Mm -hmm. for exploring that but in the day-to-day I would um I would really like guide people to, yeah, do a lot of embodying. I've, I've, I've had a practice for myself um, for, for a few years now where I do like an intuition walk. So I just go out into nature or preferably in the beginning, at least somewhere where it's not super busy, a lot of things happening and just like sense into where, where your intuition wants to guide you. 
And what mm-hmm. wants to happen next? Like, do I want to explore this thing or look under that rock or climb that tree or sit by this water or or just move slower or faster or just sensing into to to that in a way that feels very playful and doesn't have to lead to any anything but then also like other simple practices is just like when deciding what to eat for breakfast like maybe it's it's convenient to look in the fridge if you're at home like what do I have to choose from but just like sensing into rather than like minding my way to this is what I do every morning and this is the routine unless you love it you could do that too but just or like how to dress or who to call or just I'm yeah I I notice I'm I'm using my body a lot when I when I speak which is not going through in the audio but just like noticing where where you're leaning in or what yeah like expansive like expansive yeah and relax and like yeah yeah. So I think there's lots of tools of, of doing it, but I think there's this, there, it needs to be some component of choosing to, to n- switch the focus from the mind chatter, however that is done and through stillness or through embodiment or uh, through other modalities that gets you d- with a, a bit more um, distance to what's happening in the mind at the moment. Yeah. I feel like this, the whole thing with the mind and you've, I'm sure a lot of people, we heard this when you were doing your little training about the strong mind, strong inner voice is that people always wonder like, what is it though? Like, is it the mind talking or is my intuition talking? And they struggle like figuring that out because it almost can get a little tricky because sometimes Mm -hmm. you're like, yeah, you open up the fridge and you're like, you should eat this because it's healthier for you. Like yeah, the mind's yeah. doing all this stuff. And then the, yeah. like the intuition may be like, oh, that feels good. But then, yeah. so, and, but, but you're like, well, what, it, does it really feel good for me to eat that? Or because that's bad for me. And my intuition leaving there, like yeah. there's all this drama that about it. You know what I mean? Yeah, so like, how yeah. do you know? And I know, but I'm curious for you, like, how do you know which one is speaking? Yeah, right. I think, um, First thing I want to say about that is just like we get good at the things that we practice. Mm -hmm. So if we have never listened to our intuition and then we're like, oh, I'm going to go to the and we have a lot of food issues, maybe like I'm going to go to the fridge and my intuition is going to decide like that's probably master level if if that is a trigger for you or like those kinds of areas. Um, So I would just like encourage to practice and and do it with those kinds of small things because it's not going to be the end of the world if you went with a mind but you noticed afterwards that you weren't feeling very good or whatever it reminds me of like i remember when you asked us in the training about how to what came up for me is when you like provided that space for us to be like quiet and it came up that if it's easy it's me like the intuition yeah, i love that and i yeah. think it's that like for me because it's like it's almost like when i start to notice there's too much chatter mind chatter about mm-hmm. it like, and it's mm-hmm. like, well, you should do this because this one's healthier and this is blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, yeah. I know it's my mind. But if I yeah. just opened up the fridge and my intuition was like, yogurt, that looks good. Yeah. Grab that, you know, like, it's, yeah. and I think about just life in general, like I know my mind is getting involved and it's leading too much when there's too much stories around it. There's just mm-hmm. drama. The chatter is there. Whereas mm-hmm. my intuition, it's usually not. It's always like calm. Like you said, mm-hmm. Yeah. It just is like an inner knowing, like that's the right path. And in, maybe sometimes I don't always know why, but I feel yeah. like this tug towards it, like leaning in, like you were doing or like this. Yeah. It's like a pull and it's almost like a expansive pull. Not like I want to shrink and hide from it. Yeah. Um, I guess when I want to yeah. go towards it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I love that, that framing of it because and I think this is also like we need to get to know we need to have the intention to get to know our intuitions and how it communicates and and just to to know those things that you just talked about and I talked about earlier as well like it's going to be from love and compassion it's not going to freak you out it's not going to be super complicated it's going to be wise and calm and and I think sometimes if you are unsure you could always like ask the intuition like was that you intuition like and see what happens like just play with it and not and I think this is this is something um, 
that I hear a lot from people like, well, I asked the intuition what to do with this work thing. And then it just showed me an ocean. Like, I, I don't know what to do with that. I can't use with my intuition. And I'm like, well, why didn't you ask about what the ocean represented for you? Or like, go deeper. Yeah. Like, dig follow up with the intuition and play with it. it. It's not a, it's not a super huge deal. It doesn't have to be so serious. And that's why my intuition is telling me all the time, like dance more, relax, sit down, lay down, be in nature, breathe. Like it's, it doesn't want us to be so hardworking and so serious about this thing. Um, yeah. So I think that's also an important um an important intention like I'm gonna play more with my intuition it's not a it's never gonna it's never gonna force you to do anything and even if you do feel that you get guidance from your intuition you're always free to not follow like sometimes it's like oh my god that's so scary I know I need to do it but I'm not ready for it yet okay that's fine like yeah you can also ask for like I'm not ready to do this um but support me in getting there like okay Maybe you can get something from there. Like, I just want to encourage you to explore in so many different ways and play with it and not think that just because uh, you tried once and didn't get it or something that it's it's doomed or not for you. Like, we all have an intuition. You just need to get to know yours. Yeah, that's so yeah. true. And it speaks in different ways, but it's not going to feel... Yeah, it's not hard or it's not going to make things complicated. Okay, mm -hmm. so we have three things that we can do when it comes to like the mind is showing up and you know, you start to know because you know how it feels. So when mm -hmm. the mind is showing up, you can sit back and then you observe what is happening. That's one thing you mm -hmm. said. You talk about emptying, like if you're feeling these feelings that are not, yeah, serving you, I guess, and we all know what those are, you can empty out your thoughts and look and kind of see what is there. Um, and yeah. then choose what to do with it. And then the third thing is like, mm -hmm. do something to get into your own body. And yeah. you know what this all is, is like, and I know there's so many more tips and we could be here forever going on with more, more things, but these three things can really help you if you're listening. But what yeah. this is, is like, really it's helping you shift mm. like energetically, you know, when you think of like, you know, the mind is taking over because it's starting to feel like harder, but I think yeah. that that happens yeah. a lot with the mind. When you yeah. know that's becoming the master. So you stop, yeah. you can observe, you can do the, the emptying or the thought downloads is what I call them. And then you can kind of see your thoughts there and what's happening, or you can get into the body. This is all shifting stuff. And it also yeah. all helps you give the reins back to the intuition Yeah, because it's right. a shift out of yeah. that energetic state, especially yeah. when I think about being in the body. Yeah. And I yeah. do want to ask, there's lots more tools, but one important one that I don't want to uh, leave out is the love and compassion for the mind. Yeah. To just not, we don't want to fire the mind. We don't want to hate on the mind. It's working so hard and it wants to protect us. So it's always better to be like, hey, mind, I love you. You're working so hard. Thank you for trying to save my life all day long. But not all the things that I'm trying to do in my life are life threatening. Like it's not that big a deal. But I, I also get and respect that you are sensing that. And this is like a you don't want to be patronizing. You actually do want to like that. That's yeah. what I feel like. My mind has helped me so much. Like I, I wouldn't I wouldn't be here of course without it. So I think instead of like. Yeah, I think, yeah, we talked about that a little earlier that it's so easy to just be like, oh, I hate my mind or it's so annoying or I just want it to shut up. Yeah. Try to like create or develop or nurture a loving relationship towards it. Like, okay, hey, my, I hear you have something to say. What do you want to say? Okay, you think I'm going to die from writing this post? Yeah, I'm probably not, but okay, thank you for your like, <laughs> yes, it is stuff like that. Yeah. And like these tools that you give are like, you said it earlier, the, like the chew toy. And I yeah. love the way that you described the mind as like, when you talked about it being like the puppy yeah. and that makes you think so differently of it. So tell, tell yeah. everybody about that, like how you can view the mind. Yeah. That that was in uh that's a, that's an image I use a lot in meditation because the mind is just so eager to get to work 
and it wants to do different things all the time. So it's running all over the place. And I, I like to see it as a golden retriever puppy because I think golden retriever puppies are just so, so you, you can't be mad at a golden retriever <laughs> puppy. So <laughs> you get the image. And then this puppy is just constantly wanting to go away and do things and, and chew at things or, or go look, check out things. And it's very curious and it's, and it's going all over the place, but you don't want to like, you wouldn't to a puppy, like take it very roughly and just yell it in the mm-hmm. face. You would, you would be like very tender, like, okay, yeah, but okay. We're, we're just going to go back to, to focusing on the breath now, or we're just going to go back to being still, or we're just going to practice sit and just being that noticing the mind as a puppy just wanting to be all over the place and having trouble sitting still like yeah. you don't wanna, you want to be gentle with that you don't want to be too rough so you like you can be firm like okay yeah here we go we're going to practice sit now or you're going to get to chew on this chew toy just as you said that you actually sometimes give your mind a chew toy mm-hmm. just to have it have it do something but you choose what chew toy is going to get like okay you can work on this calculation or or plan this trip or do do something mind just to keep you occupied and so i can go away and do this thing or just like relax or or whatever instead of it choosing the life or death scenarios all the time or like looking for the problems or being super triggered by everything yeah Yeah. it it's like you notice that it's doing that so you give it Mm -hmm. something that serves it because it's always going to be wanting to work just like the puppy is always going to want to play you know it's always going to want to be doing something so what can you intentionally give it because you are the master so I think about like even when I'm starting to worry and freak out about something I will assign dates for myself like, no, you, yeah. can't, you can't worry about that until this day. Yeah, you know, like, right. And that even helps me. It's almost like the yes. toy. It's like, I know yes. I see you. I know you want to worry about that. Here you go. Like, here's yeah. the toy. Like, we yeah. set a time for you to worry about it. Or, yeah. yeah, there's like other strategies that you can do, like, to help the mind because it, or give it something to focus on. Yeah. And that's also one of the tools just to reason and negotiate with it and just give it some, okay, if you are freaking out thinking that, doing and living life this more easeful flowy way that we're gonna we're everything's gonna crash and burn let's just try it for a week let's do an experiment and then you can go back to control if if everything falls apart you're you're not gonna lose your your life and work and all your relationship in one week so just like let's just try flowing with life and see what happens mind and then in a week we can evaluate and then maybe you want to go back into controlling but just like not freaking the mind out, but also just as you said as well, like negotiate, negotiating with it and just saying that's an exa- a great example that I use with a lot of my clients. Like, do you, when are you going to make this decision? Are you going to make it today? Okay. No, if not, leave it aside and decide when you're going to chew on that thing because you don't, you don't want to spend all your days chewing on the same things day in and day out and missing yeah and life and what your intuition wants to chime in on or like share with you or guide you to because I can promise you there's such a sweeter life on the intuition path like I can't even imagine like my life now to to what I expected it to be and how I thought what I thought would be possible for me but there's just so many sweet surprises along my path that I, that is all because of my intuition, not my mind, because my mind could have never imagined. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I'll summarize real quick. The, the tips that we have observing the, mind, emptying the, why do I have emptying the storm? Did I write that down? If it's, if it's very stormy, some reason that was right out, empty out the storm, empty out what's happening <laughs> in the mind, the whole um, getting into your body and whatever way feels good to you, showing the compassion to your mind. And you also talked about reasoning with the mind. Yeah. And this is just in a nutshell, this is you making the intuition more of the master instead yeah. of like your notice. It really is all about observing. And noticing yeah. the mind, doing the yeah. things that the mind is doing, and then from a loving place, working with it, mm-hmm. right? And just dis- identifying a little bit, like stepping back from like, I am not this, I am looking at it. And, yeah. And it's, it's a tool and it's great. I love it. 
and I am not my mind. All right, y'all. I hope that you really enjoyed this episode. If you did, please leave us a review if you haven't done so. Let Helena know. Reach out to her. Let her know that you enjoyed this episode. It always feels good. I I know she's not seeking that, but I feel like it feels so good to know that what you put out there is valued. I think some of y'all have been messaging me on Instagram at Ange Barnard. And you've been just leaving me such sweet messages and stuff. And I just want to acknowledge you for that because it really does help me feel good. Like just to know that like you're out there and you're listening and it makes me feel grateful that this matters to you and it's making a difference. So what I want to say to you is like spread the joy. Like if you notice somebody's doing something and it's awesome, like get that energy out there and be like, I just want to honor you for that. Like the the person that's making your coffee the other day, this girl named Mia was making my coffee and it was so yummy when she gave it to me. I used like coconut milk and cinnamon sugar and stevia. And anyway, she made it, gave it to me. And I was like, this was amazing. And she like lighted up and I was like, you're, you made the best coffee. Thank you so much. I had to like yell at her over the counter and say, hey, I want you to know I love this. But it was spreading the joy and that kind of energy out there. So I just wonder, like, is there anywhere in your life that you can send that joy out there more? Because it's going to ripple back. You're going to feel it in your own body, you know? Okay, I'll leave you with that. I hope you have the best day. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Bye.